Alrighty, heading up to Turner Peak today. Um, that is right on the New Mexico Arizona border. And when I say right on, I'm saying <laughs> the fence goes right through um, that area. In fact, the fence might even be in the activation zone. I'm going to look at that when I get home. CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. So the way we get up there uh, today, which is June 28th, is the same road we take to get back to uh, Escadilla View. And it's a really pretty drive. Oak, Aspen, Ponderosa Pine, other pine trees um, just gorgeous back in here it has not been touched by fire at all in this area so um, very pretty it's on the back side of Escadilla well back side back side to me which is the east side of Escadilla Mountain so um, should be a good little pretty little hike I did it last year um, just an absolutely stunning area peaceful nice little meadows in there and kind of on the hike um, it, I went two different ways of course the first way I went up was the hard way uh, and then after impaling myself on a tree branch got that patched up activated and then uh, hobbled down back to the car and went to the emergency room for some stitches so <laughs> let's hope we avoid all of that today my wife would not be happy at all. But uh, yeah, I'll be extra careful up here. I'm not sure as folks knowing where I'm going. I have multiple modes of communication and the airways are crackling today. Uh, today is uh, the second day of field day, which is where uh, all the ham radio operators try to get outside and operate their radios. And it's kind of a contest format, see how many contacts you can get. But uh, the ultimate is get out there uh, with some kind of something other than commercial power so it could be a generator batteries etc of course uh, to a soda operator every day is field day so um, we'll uh, get out here and get on top of the mountain and see how it goes what is blowing this morning um, over in the alpine area pretty hard the flags were pretty much straight out it's blowing around my house just kind of in a protected area so hopefully it's not whipping up there it's uh, clear skies so far and just a beautiful day they've gotten a little bit of rain so it's greened up a little bit but uh, the rainy season hasn't started in earnest and that will begin in about one week when the uh, when the monsoon start kicking up and it looks like the conditions are just about right now for a monsoonal flow up from the Gulf, so um, I'll enjoy my time up here. So with that, I'll put you back on the road. Isn't that pretty? Off of Stone Creek. Stone Creek. for getting in here and hopefully it's open all the way through um, if it's really wet you don't want to go because it is there's up to one point where you want to look at the meadow area where you're going to cross because that can get kind of boggy and uh, without four-wheel drive you're maybe getting stuck in there so we got a van up here a bunch of dogs bit of logging activity going on up here uh, hence all the markings on the trees and uh, should be interesting trying to get around this vehicle up here now this is the one little area where 
If it's wet, you'll want your four-wheel drive, and you don't want to lose any speed going through here because it can get pretty darn boggy. Not going to have that problem today, unless a high center in one of those ditches. So there you have it. Um, going across a beautiful meadow here. Take a quick look. Isn't that pretty? When it, gets, when it uh, starts raining, it's just going to be really something. And man, there are certainly a lot of seedlings. I wonder if this is part of the seeding operation they were doing. We're right up pretty much toward the end of it. Let me take a look at this other side here. So we're backed up at the end. And um, that's, uh, I believe that fence down there is New Mexico. So. We're pretty darn close to the border, coming up to it. Certainly the other end of that meadow is in New Mexico for sure. Well, I say that, but pretty sure. So, beautiful still morning up here, just a very light breeze. Let's hope it stays that way, but uh, man, this is nice up here. All right, I am at the designated trailhead so we're now leaving the red line and going to I think it's a purple line on the chart um, which I'll uh, put up here nice little drive up here took a wrong turn so I want an extra tenth mile but uh, <laughs> I really needed to a couple tenths but uh, beautiful it hasn't started raining yet but it is starting to green up a little bit they've gotten some rain um, behind me right here to the left of me is Turner Peak. So that's where we're going. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here. The Arizona and New Mexico line is right there where that fence is. And so we're gonna pretty much follow that guy up quite a bit. We're gonna go through this meadow here and then there's a gate up there um, uh, that I can cross, make it easier to cross through so I don't have to damage anything. But a beautiful morning, light breeze through here, not sure what it's going to be like on the peak. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but we'll see. Um, don't see any cloud buildups yet, so no moisture in here, uh, but there is some forecast for later in the week. Thunderstorms. Uh, thunderstorms are not your friend when you have a wire in the air. <sighs> nice and quiet up here. So. Let's get cracking. Not sure what these plants are. It looks like a almost look like an onion. Um, but uh, yeah, something. Quite a bit of it up here in little clumps. So I'm trying to avoid those guys. Went up over here toward the fence. Beautiful little meadow coming through here. So I'd say this is another one of my favorites. It's not too far from Escadia Butte. Um, it's on the same road. Theoretically, you could probably double do this one in Escadia Butte. I haven't thought about doing that, but you know, while you're back here, that's what I'd do. Um, Maybe I'll do that next year. I think this is a mile and a half, mile and a quarter hike um, from the car to the summit. There's some kind of difficult areas to it. But um, yeah, about a 1,500 foot gain. Or excuse me, a 1,000 foot gain on this one. So... Uh, once you're acclimated to the altitude, shouldn't be too tough. Here we are, along the Arizona-New Mexico border. We'll normally find a little bit of a trail next to it. 
Um, my guess is game. We'll come up to the fence and graze along before they come over. Or if they have cattle in here, obviously. Here's our gate. Just went through the gate here, still on the Arizona side. We're going to cruise over to the west a little bit and then angle up. What I found last year is certainly if you go straight, it takes you up along a ridge, which is great to a false summit. But um, there's a draw, it's quite a bit more pleasant hike up, so that's what we're going to do. You find these things out a lot of times on the way down. And then, <laughs> when you got a hole in your leg, you definitely look for the easiest ways down. And just so you can take it easy. So, looks like they've had cattle up in here a little bit. The blue jays are squawking away. Been interesting there's a certainly a, a forest fire in here but it stayed down on the ground which uh, these trees can resist a little ground fire and you can see the lower branches got a little singed there but the canopies look big and healthy uh, which is really nice so um, and it's interesting uh, I think it's the ponderosa when the fire starts to climb up the bark, it actually pops off of the tree and throws it back down onto the forest floor. So, an interesting adaptation, if you will, for these big fellows to protect themselves against fire. We're following on what looks like a little path here, but it uh, goes up through this little draw. And around this fall summit to our left, there's no reason to climb to the top of that and then go back down. So, if you're hiking at full speed, you can probably take that as a direct route. We're currently at 8,750 feet, and uh, no cell service, of course pretty remote in here. No APRS. I will have self-service at the top, but I have access to some repeaters. Probably I can get into them from here in Alpine South Mountain. Um, what's here in the background is some simplex traffic. So, pretty nice little trail um, or trail area to hike in. Um, I normally would print out a map if I had to go a long way in an area where especially I can get lost. <laughs> but this one's easy. You break the phone, runs out of batteries, whatever. Just follow the fence down. It takes you practically right up to the car. This is so pretty and peaceful in here. We're starting to get into the fallen stuff. A good grove of aspen died in here, and I don't know why. But uh, pretty gnarly. But uh, we'll continue up here. And I believe uh, Turner Peak is kind of up just a little bit to the right from here. About another mile. Hello from New Mexico. You're in Arizona. I'm in New Mexico. Right here. Anyway, it's novel. Ah, so we're gonna walk up along the fence here. It's a bit of a trail. Less crap you have to kind of get through, so we'll take that up and then uh, I think 
Yeah, we'll break left up there and go around the left side of kind of a gnarly ridge. So let's get cracking. A nice little stand of elk and uh, oak in here, not elk. I'm an idiot. Really pretty. Ah, that keeps me cool. Perfect. Let's get going. The other thing about this route going up is last year when I went up a different way, kind of to the east of here, so much fallen stuff. So this is a lot better. Doesn't mean we're not going to get over a lot of fallen stuff, but it was a real wreck up there. Doesn't mean we won't run into it again, but we're going to angle up this uh, path here and then swing around to the east and go up to that ridge um, on the chart. Um, and go ahead and take a look at the blog that's linked to this at, in the description, but the chart link will be on there. You'll see that we go up to about 93 or 91 and then we have to go up another 300 feet. So I think I was wrong about the fence being, or the activation zone being in both states. Wrong again. But here's the, the border. We'll cruise up this some more. This is a point where we um, head straight up and go on the uh, east side of that ridge there. Um, there's a path, and uh, it's a lot safer than trying to navigate. It looks like a really rocky ridge. But uh, slight breeze, nothing heavy duty yet. So let's get cranking. As we break out on the east ridge here, this is the view. Looks like Luna, the town of Luna, right over there. And uh, we're going to head up just the east side of this guy. And. Uh, might be able to see the summit over there. So let's get cracking. All right, I've just come around this ridge here, kind of a pre-summit. And I don't know if you can tell by the rock, but going over that'd be a real pain in the ass with a backpack. All of it's loose, and um, it just is <laughs> not the right thing to do, in my opinion. So. We're back up to this little saddle here between the two summits. Come up here and stand on that. And then, oh, about 300, 320 feet climb, and we'll be on Turner Peak and we can start setting up. So, this is a, I'd say, there's three foot wide flat spot on this on this ridge but it's nice and wide I mean it's huge but just kind of cool this little ridge between the mountains so. uh, a little bit of wind up here sorry about that you see what made going around that uh, ridge over there really difficult is it's nothing but cinders and uh, loose dirt so you have to be careful otherwise you'll find yourself going oh Anyway, enough goofing around, back to work. All right, here's our marker. Looks like a uh, peak, peak bagger log, so I'll sign that. We're on the summit. I'm gonna give you a 360 view because the summit is a little tiny pointy thing. Shit. All right, 360 now. So there you go. My uh, left foot is on the benchmark. Looks like a brass benchmark. Kind of cool. Get a picture of that and post it. So anyway, let's see if we can set up the antenna without falling on something and uh, get cracking on some contacts. We're a little bit behind uh, my um, original ETA, 
it was 10 30 looks like it's 11 30. um you really have to it's a navigation nightmare so you really have to stop and think and pick your way through if you want to avoid a whole bunch of down stuff so um also really picking your way through all the loose dirt and stuff on that uh, one side there because it's just a really steep thing and so you just have to you know go slow it's not i don't think it's dangerous it's taking your time so anyway it's enough yakking i think let's get cracking somebody asked me what my go-to antenna is it's right here it's two ounces it is the k6 ark spider thread antenna what's cool i don't know if you can see it right there right next to my thumb is the vnc connector and has a nine to one unin um soldered right in there and epoxied so makes us uh gives us a moldy band antenna and um yeah it just kills it i mean i've reached spain um and uh new zealand some other countries even in the shit conditions uh solar conditions we have now so anyway i'm gonna get cracking um i'm gonna hold, bring this away and there's escudia mountain beautiful little meadow down there that i was talking about and uh Escadillas, uh, pretty much a heading of uh, 310. Look down here, I think that's the town of Luna at about uh, 210 south, a little bit west. Here's here's due south right here. So it just kind of give you an idea of what we got up here. I believe that's South Mountain right over there um, with the tower on it. So I'd have great connection in here and I should have awesome cell reception. So, enough yakking, let's get set up. Okay, we're, um... Listen to the radio over here. And, uh, we're up on top, I'm set up, radio's on. Keeping it covered with this, uh, chair cover. Um, kind of down. The antenna's right on the summit. The summit has about a three three square foot area. It's a tiny little peak. So we're down here uh, with the antenna up there on the peak. And we're going to see if we can get some contacts. Adam. Jeez, what is that?
Once you get to a thousand points, you go to a mountain goat. On the 28th, no less. All right, well, let's get back here. Let's go over to 20 and see what we can do. So. up here coming out of the uh in the north actually so it's picking up and i'm heading down Out of the gnarly part, going into my favorite part, which is a little bit more open forest. Easy, oops, easy bushwhack. Because you're just walking through the forest. The only thing I'm doing is just watching where I step. Trying not to step on anything that's trying to grow, especially pine trees. So, here we go down into that little meadow there. So, this is a uh, real luxury. <clears throat> kind of this side of that one summit. There's just so much fallen stuff. And you have to watch every step. Uh, really stunning in here just so pretty just about about uh, about back at the car I think total hike might be around three miles maybe a little more not much to the car uh, this meadow is just I don't know why it, uh, just having all these trees spotted around in here really makes it uh, special Anyway, that's uh, pretty much a wrap. I, um, 
I got around 30 contacts. Uh, like I said, not a ton with the field day just wrapping up. People have been on the radio for two days and um, or 24 hours, I guess. So pretty. They're probably a ham radio overload. Some stay up late. Some have shifts that work club stations and stuff. Pretty fun. Anywho. Taylor Mountain. Check. And next up is Mount Baldy. That's supposed to be a really pretty trail. A um, couple thousand feet of gain over about six miles. So um, just a long trail. Um, so that should be that should be interesting. 